What's up everybody, it's Kellen here from Start Your Systems and welcome back to MX Simulator where today we're going to be previewing the 2023 Daytona Supercross which, hey look at that, it looks like the 22, uh, 20, 2022 Daytona Supercross. Uh, Ricky Carmichael for the track this year has decided to pretty much run it back. Uh, minor changes with this track this year, there's a couple things that are like a little bit different about where the jumps are and, and honestly the track that was built for the sim race is a little bit uh, different than the track that we'll see on the weekend anyway because they added a few extra jumps based on what I've seen from some press day video and stuff like that but it is almost identical to the track that we had in 2022 so maybe this video is a little bit like yeah we've already seen it but uh, also wanted to just kind of play it talk about this track talk about my expectations going into the weekend have a little bit of fun with it so um, first of all, I wanted to say I'm riding as uh, Kyle Chisholm here on the Twisted T HEP Suzuki team. And uh, this is a part of a AMA Supercross Riders Pack that Bootsy put out. It's been a long time since I feel like there was like a consistent flow of pro rider packs put out in MX Simulators. So I feel like now that Bootsy put one out like this, I feel like I should give it some credit and talk about it a little bit. So uh, riding as Chiz here, just because Chiz is a Florida guy, and I felt like it was kind of cool to show off something other than just the top guys all the time. But I think Bootsy did a great job with this pack. It's really cool to uh, see it put all, all together, and if you would like to ride as one of the pro riders as well in the game, I'll uh, link it in the description below so you guys can try it out for yourself. But enough about that. Let's talk about this track. Like I said, uh, you know, pretty similar to last year's track, but Daytona always is a little bit different in any shape or form than any year, really. Like, you could say that the track is identical to last year's, but it also will race maybe a little bit different than last year's anyway, because the lines will shape up different and the options of tripling into a section versus doubling in or whatever will be a lot different. It's not always going to be the exact same racetrack, which is true about a lot of tracks. You can't say Daytona is the only track like that, um, but Daytona because it breaks down the way it is, because it's a more outdoorsy supercross track, tends to have those line variations be a bit more uh, prominent. So I think that we'll see a different brand, at least to a degree of the racing this weekend than what we saw last year. You also have to factor in that everyone this year is at a little bit of a different stage than where they were last year. For example, Cooper Webb already has two wins and uh, he had, I don't think even hit the podium, maybe twice all of uh, 2022 before Daytona happened when he again led a lot of the main event and landed on the podium but you know you have to factor in that he's looking a lot stronger uh, Chase Sexton was coming off of uh, a huge crash at Minneapolis two weeks prior to the Daytona Supercross last year you know he's been crashing but it hasn't been huge crashes of late so I think both of those guys are going to feel better this weekend than they did last year for example uh, <clears throat> whereas Eli Tomac had the best start to his career ever in a Supercross championship thus far to be leading the championship at this stage and uh, have four wins to his credit already. But it doesn't feel like a walk away yet. So is Tomac the same version of Tomac that we saw last year when his sixth Daytona Supercross and uh, break a tie with Ricky Carmichael for the most wins all time at Daytona? Or is he better or is he worse? There's a lot of variables packed in there. So I will say, starting right off before I even like talk about who I think is gonna win, my idealist in me Hopes that we see Sexton win this weekend, Webb finish second, and Tomac finish third. Why would I say that? Well, right now, uh, Tomac has a two-point lead on Cooper Webb and a five-point lead on Chase Sexton. If they finish Sexton, Webb, Tomac, one, two, three this weekend, they will all be tied for the championship lead. A dead heat on 181 points, which is the first time I, I believe it's ever happened that there's been three riders that would have the red plate, if it happens. And it would also set us up for the point where round nine next week in Indianapolis is the true halfway point of the championship uh, for a 17 round season. And how cool would it be to have a three-way tie for the championship lead at exactly halfway? Uh, kind of definitely drives home the moniker that the series starts at Daytona, but I just think it would be really cool to see. So I, I'm not saying that I don't want Tomac or I don't want Webb or I don't want somebody else to win, but I think it would be cool just for the storyline of it to have uh, Sexton go away this weekend as the winner with Webb in second and uh, Eli in third. So I will say that to start it off. However, the flip side of the token is Webb, Sexton, anybody else on the 450 gate <clears throat> that isn't named Eli Tomac has never won the Daytona Supercross before. <clears throat> that includes Ken Rocks and Jason Anderson, etc., etc. You know, Eli's won six of these things and they pretty much were all done in succession except for Justin Brayton breaking it up there a little bit in the middle. And I think the last person to win it besides Eli was Ryan Dungey. So uh, it's been a long storied, successful 
the journey for Eli at Daytona, and I think that you have to give the nod to him every time we go here, regardless of which, because of that. Uh, even if he's not feeling the best, I still think that he's arguably the best uh, rider in Daytona Supercross history. Uh, yes, has he raced it more times than Ricky has in the Premier class? Yeah, but uh, you still have to say that the wins speak for themselves, and his record here has been incredible. So I, I do think that T Tomac does get the win this weekend in the 450 class. It's kind of maybe a boring answer just because Tomac's obviously won here a lot before, so you maybe want to see someone different. But based on who I picked on the Moto 60 show yesterday with Steve Mathis, I, I went with Tomac. I, I don't see why you cannot pick him for Daytona. But if he gets a bad start, I think that Webb and Sexton and all those other guys definitely have something to say about it. I think they're fast enough to run with Eli at, uh, at Daytona at certain points, maybe not for a full main event. But um, yeah, if Eli doesn't get the start, maybe uh, maybe the tide shifts a little bit this week and we see a different guy win. But like I said, it would be the first time someone uh, that's not Eli Tomac on the gate this weekend would ever have won the Daytona Supercross. Webb's never even won it on the 250. Uh, Chase Sexton only raced it once on a 250, I believe and finished second to Forkner. I could be wrong on that, don't quote me. Um, and then uh, he hasn't done tremendously well at Daytona on a 450, but it also hasn't been bad. Like It's not like he sucked at Daytona. So is he going to be better this weekend than we've ever seen him at Daytona? Yeah, probably, because he's carrying a lot of momentum from the last few weeks, and obviously he's really good outdoors, and Daytona is more of an outdoors track. So I, I think Sexton lands on the podium, and I think Cooper Webb probably does too, based on last year's result being his best of the season, basically with Red Bull KTM. But uh, I still would have to give the nod to Tomac. Behind that, though, I mean, like, I don't know what else to say. Like, Jason Anderson gets a Triple Crown win last week uh, in race two, but also kind of, you know, shot himself in the foot, although it wasn't really entirely his fault to crash in the first turn of the first main event. Then he crashed from, well, he didn't crash, but he almost went down from second place uh, in the final race, which cost him some points. So, like, he's, in my opinion, kind of out of it. Like, I really do think we have a three-horse race at this point. I don't think Ken Roxon's going to suddenly light up and start getting race wins uh, and claw into these guys or anything like that. Justin Barsha, Aaron Plessinger, they're all close, but maybe a bit too far. And, and you just kind of go down the list from there of guys that like, well, yeah, if they finish a third, be a great result, but I don't know about a win. I think we're starting to see a trend established in this 450 class where the three guys that are at the front are the three guys we're going to see at the front quite often going forward. So um, I would think it would be one of those three this weekend. I don't think that you would say Anderson or someone else would win it, but maybe they do. Maybe we get an off-the-wall winner this weekend, which would be also kind of fun as well. Uh, so hopefully that happens. Uh, also, RJ Hampshire making his 450 class debut this weekend. He's jumping up and riding a 450 for Rockstar Husqvarna. That'll be pretty fun. I uh, talked about on press day earlier today with our own Mitch Kendra at Racer X that, uh, you know, it was really just about like him trying to get healthy off of the A2 crash that he had and uh, wasn't really sure if he was going to be able to even attempt to do this, but uh, was saying that it was kind of in the works for a while, always wanted to do it, but finally got the opportunity and didn't want to skip out on it. So giving it a go this weekend, I don't necessarily think he's like a top five guy, maybe top 10, but we'll see. Uh, so that's kind of a cool storyline. But then let's switch gears to the 250 class here with the final couple of minutes of this video. Nate Thrasher wins the Triple Crown last week. Hunter Lawrence uh, finishes, I think, second overall in the night, but uh, you know still has a 14-point lead in the championship over Max Anstey. No, 11-point lead in the championship over Max Anstey. And then Thrasher is 14 back or something like that. It's somewhere in that range. And so if you're Lawrence, everything's still just kind of business as usual. I'd have to imagine he comes into Daytona again thinking he should be the favorite and the guy, and, and why wouldn't he be? He's always been pretty good at Daytona as well, so um, I think that Hunter Lawrence is definitely a guy that I would consider to be the favorite going into the weekend, but I, uh, I'm going to go off the wall this weekend. I think Jeremy Martin wins the Daytona Supercross, and I know it sounds like, what club? And I know he only won the race last week, but he got gifts and Thrasher and Smith and Lawrence and... Heck, even Deegan have looked better and blah, 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 blah. But J-Mart is so good at Daytona. In fact, he's only ever finished off the podium once there in seven tries. And when he raced a 450 in 2017 at Daytona, he led for a little while and eventually finished second. Like, this is almost like a home race away from home, I feel like, for J-Mart. And because of that, I just feel like the vibes carrying into this race will be pretty strong for him. And, and I think that he has all the reason in the world to be like, man, this is, this is a great place for me. Like, I'm just going to feel better at this round. Uh, finally made it three rounds into a championship for the first time since 2018, I think is what he was saying. So for me, I, I would just have to pick J-Mart. I, I think that it would be 
probably a little bit far-fetched if he didn't win last week to say that, but because he's now got a win under his belt in that final race and kind of felt what it's like to win again and also slowly got better at the Triple Crown, like I think he's just working towards a position where he can win again and to come to a track that he's so successful at might just be that little flame that lights under him. So I'm picking him. I think behind that, you know, Lawrence, Thrasher, Smith, Anstey, Vial, Deegan, etc. Like any of those guys probably get on the box. I'd have to say Lawrence probably definitely gets on the podium. But uh, yeah, I would, I would be stoked to see J Mart win. So those are my two picks, Tomac and J Mart this weekend at Daytona. And uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Who's going to win this weekend at Daytona? And really, what do you guys think of this racetrack being a replica uh, rerun, basically, what, doing the same track over and over again? In the past, People have been stoked about when an old track comes back, when we have like, a, you know, an old Tampa or we have an old uh, Anaheim that's re-ran again. People are like, oh, this is cool. This is such a nostalgia trip. But obviously this one is literally like last year's track. So it's not like a nostalgia trip necessarily, but it's a rerun of a race. And last year's race was pretty good. So, I mean, is it all bad that Ricky just copy and pasted the design? I don't necessarily think so. I think people are getting a little bit worked up over that and I don't think it's that bad at all. But, I mean, teach their own. Some people don't like it. Some people do. Whatever it is, just curious of what your guys' thoughts and opinions are in the comment section below. So let me know. And uh, thanks, guys, so much for tuning in and watching another video here on Start Your Systems. My name is Kellen, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So long for now.